Now, it's been my experience through the years that people oftentimes that are not familiar with the power and the integrity and the historicity of the Bible oftentimes are guilty of just saying, you know, the Bible is a book among many religious books, but nothing could be further from the truth. And that's why reasonable and intelligent people should have some discussions on the content of Bible prophecy, because this book is almost, and again, scholars and theologians uh, disagree percentage point wise, but you can safely say that the Bible is approximately one third prophecy. If you're a new student of the Bible, or perhaps you know little about the Bible, the Bible is not actually a book, but it is a compilation of 66 books written by 40 plus authors over a period of about 1,500 years written in three languages originally, Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek. The manuscript evidence of the Bible is overwhelming. Uh, Between 22 to 24,000 copies of manuscripts and scrolls and and pieces. And uh, in recent days with some new technology, there are some that have said that that number is revised. It's closer to 66,800 and some manuscripts, scrolls, and pieces. Well, what does that mean to the average person? What it means is important because it means that the content of the Bible is accurate and provable. Unlike any other book, any other writing in all of history, overwhelmingly. Homer's Iliad is considered by many to be one of the most documented literary great pieces And there are approximately 1,800 manuscripts for Homer's Iliad. Compare that to the Bible, 66,800 in some, by new numbers, manuscripts, scrolls, references. What that translates to is that the Bible is accurate and the Bible is provable. Many times people have said to me, well, you know, the Bible, I'm not saying that the Bible doesn't have some things in it that are accurate or some things in it that are historical, but you know, Tiff, the Bible's been translated so many times that it would be impossible for it to still be accurate after all of these centuries and all these years. Well, you see, that's where manuscript evidence is so important to understand. Because, yes, the Bible has been translated in languages all over the world. Uh, Billions of copies of the Bible have been published and printed and distributed, more than any other book. They don't even put it on the bestsellers list because it is just every year the bestseller by far. There's no book that publishes and propagates like the Bible. It is a book that has stood the test of time. But manuscript evidence, for example... Greek is, uh, and I know that there is a different Greek today than there was back in the days of, of manuscript, Kanoi Greek, but there are people that still are able to read that, and there are over 20,000 copies of the New Testament that are available. So it's inaccurate to say that it's been translated so many times that it's not accurate because the original mold, the original manuscripts are still available to us today to interpret. And those who copied them did so with great intent and uh, we'll not get into how they did that, but do some research on that. I think you'll be absolutely blown away as to how cautious and how careful they were throughout history in dealing with original manuscripts. Not to mention in 1947, some shepherds in the Middle East were tending their sheep and throwing rocks into a cave. They heard a unique sound like the breaking of a jar or the breaking of a vessel. And if you know the history of the caves of Qumran, those young shepherds went in there and they found multiple scrolls. The entire book of Isaiah was one of the scrolls that they found in the caves of Qumran. And do you know what they discovered? This is 1947, by the way. This is not, you know, ancient history. 1947. Some of you that are listening were alive in 1947. I wasn't, but we're not talking about ancient history. 1947, do you know what they found in that scroll in Isaiah? It was word for word, 
exactly like the book of Isaiah in the Bible, as were other things that were found in the caves of Qumran. So if you ever hear anybody say that the Bible's not believable because it's too old or it's been translated too many times, and that's a subject upon which volumes are built. I'm not doing an exhaustive study on that today. I'm just telling you that anyone who tells you that the Bible and the prophecies of the Bible are not believable or not trustworthy, you're talking to someone who's had shallow education or misinformed education. It is provable. The Bible is provable through science. The Bible is provable through archaeology. The Bible is provable through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. One of the most well-documented facts in history, not just said by Christians, but non-Christians as well. The Bible is provable through prophecy because almost one-third of the Bible is prophecy and over 80% of those prophecies have already come to pass with complete and total accuracy. And the Bible is provable through manuscript evidence. Just to give you some ideas. And, uh, you know, I was talking to someone the other day. They asked me that question. They said, what do you mean the Bible's provable through archaeology? Now, most of you that are listening have heard of biblical archaeology, but here's the misnomer about biblical archaeology. Most people say, well, yeah, of course it's provable through biblical archaeology. It's biblical archaeology. They're all a bunch of Christians operating from a bias. No, that's not true. And I know that it would seem to be true, they only call it biblical archaeology because those digs are being carried out in the lands of the Bible. Most archaeologists are not Christians. Many of the finds, many of the digs, many of the great discoveries in biblical archaeology were done by scientists, geologists, archaeologists, non-believers, skeptics, and the list goes on. Do you know how many digs there have been in the land of the Bible through archaeology? over 26,000. Do you know how many of those have disproved any of the content in the Bible? Not one single find in 26,000 digs in archaeology. Do you know how many of those digs have proven the content of the Scripture? Hundreds and thousands. One quick example. For many years, one of the uh, attacks and the critics' attacks against the Scripture was its reference to a people called the Hittites. And uh, there was nothing anywhere in the world about Hittites or a Hittite civilization. So oftentimes in universities and in higher education, this was one of the arguments leveled against the Bible. Say, well, you know, the Bible speaks about Hittites and there is no record of Hittites and this is just proof that many of the things that in the Bible are inaccurate in their fabrications. You know, several years ago in Turkey, they uncovered uh, many items that proved a Hittite civilization. Now, evidence for the Hittite people and the Hittite civilization are almost innumerable. When they uncovered that and began to dig, I mean, they just came across hundreds and thousands of articles and pieces and, and verified and proved that culture. So when it comes down to a bottom line, it's not that you have to believe the Bible in blind faith. It's not like you've got to throw yourself off the cliff of intellectual reason, saying, well, you know, if I'm going to be a Christian, I'm just going to have to go it in the dark. No, the Bible stands any test of academic scrutiny. It is the most provable, documented book in world history. And anybody that tells you different is coming from an academic bias and they're not telling you the truth.